football with Gary Cherry and Coach Johnny Toombs. Brought to you by Athletic Supply, Davis Shoes, Luther Bells, Jimmy Cobb Insurance, Texacana Athletic Club, Regency House, McGuire Sound, Photomation, Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Or Chevrolet, Texacana Immediate Care, Raffaele Realty, Hunter Power Saw, American National Bank, White's Glenwood House, Pepsi Cola Bottling Company, Hopkins Econo Mart, Teachers Credit Union, Daily Fence Company, Ramblin' Rose Forest, and Tony Wiltshire Company. Welcome to Pleasant Grove Hawk Football with Athletic Director and Head Football Coach Johnny Toombs. Last Friday night, Hugh Springs had a total offense of 312 yards compared to Pleasant Grove's 214. But the scoreboard said it was 9, Pleasant Grove 7 for Hugh Springs. A big conference win, Johnny. Well, it was. It was just like the last four weeks. It uh, went right down to the wire, and the kids showed a lot of character to win. And uh, as you mentioned, Hugh Springs did have more yardage than we did, but we've lost a ball game or two where we outgained our opponents, so we certainly don't mind that tr uh, turnaround at all. I noticed Tony Wiltshire had uh, 145 yards on 27 carries. A big night for this young man. We didn't have any idea that Tony had that much yardage until we looked at the stats after the game, but he did run tough inside, and uh, Todd Hiron and Scott Icorn ran well and blocked well, and the offensive line did a good job. We didn't uh, have a lot of productivity offensively, but we were able to, to make the move and get in the end zone when we had to. I was talking earlier this year on one of the shows about Brian Baker's foot. He came back, and that field goal really was the one that really put the key to the victory. Brian has really been an offensive factor for us. Uh, you know, a lot of times in the past we've fallen up a little short and, and maybe fourth and five throw an incomplete pass trying to get in the end zone or something. But, but any time you have a long drive and you get points on the board, it's a lot better than going away empty-handed. And he's, he's really made a difference in several ball games already. I know your assistant uh, coach, uh, Fawcett, uh, certainly has to be proud of his defense. There were five interceptions by your secondary. Well, Jerry Fawcett and uh, the, the defensive staff uh, had a good game plan, had a good scheme. They stopped Darren Terry, Hugh Springs' outstanding athlete. We, uh, we left some receivers open at times, and Hugh Springs dropped some, but the five uh, interceptions really turned the ball game around. You had a special person on the sidelines last Friday night. Talk to us about Doc. Uh, I believe his name was Doc Smith. Yeah, Doc Smith is uh, a, a fellow that uh, was at Paul Pewitt when I was there. Doc was a custodian, bus driver, trainer, and a very dear friend, special person to me. And Doc retired several years ago. He's in his 80s now. and. Uh, First time he's seen one of my teams at Pleasant Grove play, and he was on the sidelines with us for a little while, and it really, really meant something special to me for Doc to be there. We've got a lot of action in that first half coming your way, but uh, first, these messages. You know, giving yourself a gift for the home sure makes a lot of sense these days, especially when you have to watch your budget like Deborah and I do. It's really the only practical thing to do at Christmas time. Our new dining group is already here for us to enjoy now, through the holidays, and for years to come. So when you want more, so when you want more than just a furniture store, it's White's Glenwood House. American National Bank is your full-service bank. For your convenience, our drive through windows open from 7.30 to 6 weekdays and 9 till noon on Saturdays. As the financial leader in Northwest Texarkana, American National Bank offers interest-bearing checking accounts, money market accounts, IRAs, CDs, and will assist you for your mortgage loan, automobile, personal, or commercial loan. Deposit or withdraw at your convenience with Max 24. American National Bank, 2301 Richmond Road, member FDIC. Hi, this is Miniman X Headroom's Pop Quiz. And what I want to know is, Swagger, where does the refreshing new phrase catch the wave come from? Pepsi. Obviously, cocologists. Blindfold, please. Huh. Quicker next time. In blind taste tests, which pop drink did more people prefer? The new taste of Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Wrong. Mm, I love trick questions. Coke. Coke. The new taste of Coke. It's true. You heard it here first. C catch the wave. Coke. Pleasant weather and uh, fair skies, but uh, a big conference game for Pleasant Grove. There was. Uh, Hugh Springs had a, a loss last week, and they had their backs to the wall. It was a big ball game for both ball clubs. Uh, Hugh Springs won the toss and elected to receive, and Steve Cullen makes a tackle on the opening kickoff, and the 
The Hawks defense from the word go just really played well. Our defensive ends, Mike Kyles made the first play, and that's Paul Uber on that tackle, but our defensive ends, Mike Kyles and Ed Zid, just played a real fine ball game, and as did the entire defense. And uh, we hold them on three plays, and they punt away, and uh, Van Marsh did a good job. This punt hits the ground, but he does, he does a good job all night long catching the ball. And, we start out with a comedy of errors. We're going to fumble on uh, second down. Hugh Springs is going to recover. Uh, then on their very first play, they're going to fumble, and I believe Mike Kyles recovers. That makes everything even Steven now. Doesn't it? Yeah, but we're going to go one up again because on the, about the two plays later, we're going to fumble. Tony makes some good yardage and has the ball stripped away. So both ball clubs appear to be a little tight and a little nervous early in the contest. And uh, I believe with the exception of one inter interception, that was our last turnover. But Van Morris intercepts the ball here to stop this drive, one of the five interceptions we had. Uh, we come back here on the belly play to Scott Icorn. Good blocking by Mike Young and Chad Davis, Craig Schultz. And Kenny Davis punted the ball eight times. Boy, just did a super job. We told Kenny last week if he could uh, have about a 30-yard average and cut down on the returns, we'd be tickled. And uh, we kept the ball away from Darren Terry. They'll do everything back real well. This is Van with the fair catch. It's very important to catch the ball and not let it hit the ground. Wilshire uh, has some good blocks from the right side of the offensive line. Jimmy Townsend, Tommy Welch, Jerry Moody. This is David Oliver with just a great catch on the pass from David Fawcett. They've really become a, a combination that we've needed, and I think we're going to see a lot more of them in the future. This is Wilshire again as the first quarter ends with no score. And on third down, the pass to Oliver was incomplete, and here's the big 42-yard field goal from uh, Brian Baker. Instead of coming up empty-handed, we get on the scoreboard, and three points is going to hold up for a long time. Well, that magic toe of Brian has really come a long way. And he's a sophomore. He has great temperament for it, and uh, he's, he's going to be a good one for a long time. That's the only time that Darren Terry touched the ball on kick returns, and for the fans that don't know, that here he is here with the ball. He's a blue chip uh, prospect in both football and basketball, an outstanding athlete, and the Hawks just did a super job on defense. You can see all the white shirts around him. I think he had 30 yards rushing on 22 carries, and that's just fantastic. That's a credit to that defensive Oh, it really is. Uh, they just, you know, just played our hearts out on defense and, and kept us in the ball game long enough till the offense got on track and got the winning score. Hugh Springs did a, a real fine job against us defensively, and and they shut our offense down real well until that last possession. But uh, kick there by Kenny Davis. It was offsetting penalties that we ran into the kicker, and uh, uh, they ran into the kicker, and then we interfered with the fair catch, so we had to kick it over, and Kenny fielded this high snap and uh, got the kick down the field, and our kick coverage there again was very good. Chad Dodson does a super job getting the ball back to Kenny, and that's a very important job. So with the three point lead. Uh, we're relying on the defense. Hugh Springs tries to counter play. Uh, our linebackers, Paul Uber, Craig Schultz, uh, Todd Howard played well. Trace Warren is injured and didn't play in the first half, but was able to play in the second half. It's one of the many times that we did let the receiver slip behind us, and that concerns us somewhat, but we come up and make a big play on Terry and uh, stop the counter for minimal gain again and couldn't get the handle on the football gear, and it just got out of bounds a little too quick. Is a halfback option, and, and it was picked off by Van Morris. And Van Morris played the ricochet, and uh, boy, that was a big saver. Van had two. Uh, Steve Cullen had an interception. Tony almost breaks this play. Uh, John Daly had an interception, and uh, I can't remember who the fifth one was offhand, but we did have five interceptions in the ball game. This is right before halftime. Uh, this youngster is a good sophomore running back for Hugh Springs breaks, but the secondary is able to corral him. Uh, this is a big pass here to Darren Terry on the sideline. It's just impossible to stop that one when they put it in the right spot. This youngster is 6'5", 220, and, and has tremendous speed. We certainly don't have anyone that can get in a foot race or go upstairs and get the ball from him. That one was overthrown. It's right before halftime now. And that one was barely deflected just enough by Van to knock the if ball away. If he wide. hadn't hit that one, that would have been an easy six. This is David Oliver's uh, in quarterback now, pass incomplete. About four half, we're punting the football away. Still a lot of action left in this half. We're going to get down and get one more opportunity. That's good coverage from John Hodges, Chad Dotson, Steve Cullen. This one's intercepted by John Daly. 
And David Fawcett's going to have the other interception here a little bit later, but we try to swing pass to uh, Scott Icorn, incomplete. Come back and run the counter to Wilshire. Has some good blocking, picks up good yardage, but we bog down and Kenny punts the ball away. Good job punting the ball away from number 10, Darren Terry. Kenny did a good job keeping the ball away from Darren Terry. And this shows you what uh, excitement Terry can bring to you. You know, he bounces off of two tackles and luckily we were there, but this is the big interception from Fawcett here by Fawcett. He steps in front and turns it upfield and gets the ball down. Uh, we got two chances uh, here later. We, we run a fake field goal uh, with 13 seconds left. We had all of our timeouts left and then lined up and tried a 50 yarder that fell a little bit short. But uh, this was a big pass here from Oliver to Van Marsh to get us down in scoring position down to about the 20. This is the fake field goal and uh, they didn't let Oliver out. So David scrambles around and hits the receiver and Cullen gets the ball down to the five yard line, but we had a lineman downfield. And so after the penalty, well, this is a 50-yarder, and uh, I'll tell you what, he didn't miss it by much. It was a little short and to the left, but it was uh, it was close to being there, and that's there again. Brian Baker is a tremendous weapon on offense for us. Well, it's 3 nothing here at halftime uh, defensively, a defensive battle. A lot of offense was shown in the first half, but uh, anything that you had to change at halftime? Well, you know, we've, we still are concerned about not putting points on the board offensively. Uh, we're defensively oriented. We're, we're always going to play good defense. We stress defense. We believe in defense. But, uh, you know, we've made it tough on ourselves by not being able to score. We're not going to enjoy a very good field position in the second half. And uh, uh, finally, when it was time to go to work and get the ball in the end zone, the offense did. But the, the defense completely controlled the football game for us. Now, Trace Warren was questionable for the ball game, but I believe with uh, Ilbury, who took his place, came down with some muscle cramps, right. and you had to put him into service. Sophomore Paul Ilbury uh, played a very good first half, but he had severe leg cramps. In fact, it, it hit him right before the second half kickoff, and uh, the doctors had told us that, uh, you know, Trace probably could play, and, uh, you know, kind of left it up to us. It was similar to Tony Wilshire's situation a couple of weeks ago, but we felt like we needed Trace, and his parents wanted him to play, and he did too. So he played the entire, entire second half and didn't have any, any problems, so we hope he's well now and ready to go. Do you think that maybe you Springs, with the fact that Darren Terry was being limited on the rushing, that they went more to the passing offense, or they normally don't, or they basically are a passing team anyway? They throw the ball a lot. They'll put Terry wherever they need to put him to get the ball to him, but I think we demoralized them some in the first half by shutting Terry down as much as we did, and uh, he is the key to their ball club. Uh, probably as dominant a factor on offense as anybody we've seen in a long time. And, and our kids just did a tremendous job, and the staff did a good job preparing them for Terry. And, uh, you know, we took that dimension away from them, and I think they did have to go shopping for something else in the second half. Well, we've got a lot of excitement coming your way for the second half, but first, these messages. Some real estate agents have only one sales tool, and even though they keep hammering away with it, they don't always get the results you'd hope for. But our company has a comprehensive home marketing system with a very simple benefit. It works. Better Homes and Gardens, the better way to sell your home. For free, no obligation home market analysis, call Raffaele Realtor 794-3322, also displaying homes for sale or lease at our new office in Central Mall. We all like to save money and want to get the very best value. That's why I buy all of my jewelry from Luther Bells in Central Mall. If you're shopping for jewelry, I encourage you to visit Luther Bells before you make your final decision. I know when I buy from Luther Bells, I've gotten the best quality for the price. When you're shopping for jewelry, stop by Luther Bells and you'll see what I mean. Luther Bells in Texarkana. Daily Fence Company, serving Texarkana with quality in the board and chain fencing business, now offers cloth awnings at an unbelievable price. For patios, storefronts, even windows, enhance the beauty of your home or business with durable awnings. Regulate the warmth and brilliance of the sun with a wide variety of colors and styles to choose from. Call today. Free estimates are planning service. Satisfaction is guaranteed. Cloth awnings, now at Daily Fence Company. Call 838-7892. For quite some time now, we've been telling you that Orr Chevrolet beats them all. Now, we guarantee it. Or Chevy in Texarkana will beat any advertised price on any new Chevrolet car or truck. That simply means that you're sure to get the best deal at Orr Chevrolet. Just bring us any ad. 
for any dealer anywhere in the Arklatex. And Or Chevy will beat that advertised price. Now more than ever at Or Chevrolet, we beat them all. Third quarter coming up with Pleasant Grove on top of the score of three to nothing, Johnny, and uh, a lot of action for the next two quarters. Yeah, and the Hawks were saved. We had the option in the second half. We told the kids at halftime that we really felt like if we could score first and you know get ahead ten to zero, that with uh, you know the background that Hugh Springs has had, being a, a playoff team last year and with the success they've had in basketball, that they may you know decide it wasn't worth it and kind of shut their motor off. But we couldn't get anything going offensively. A lot of that, you know, credit has to be given to Hugh Springs' defense because they did have a good defensive scheme, and uh, and they're going to get on the scoreboard first, and that, of course, fired them up. But uh, we punt the ball away, and they're going to get pretty good field position, about the 35 or 40. Uh, there's Terry for five or six, but still a good defensive effort against him, but they call for a personal foul, which uh, timely uh, was not very timely, and they moved the ball down the field uh, to about the 30. Defense swarming, doing a good job. Here's Terry on the counter. And you can see we've got pretty good angles on him, but he's still able to, to turn the corner, knocks the ball loose, but he's out of bounds. This is the, uh, I believe that was the fourth down play for the first down. Uh, back to the right side, that's Todd Hiring, and uh, I believe Mike Kyles was in on that. Uh, this is the out pattern to, to Terry. You know, he's 6'5", and he throws the ball up that high, and he goes up and gets it, and there's not much we can do. And this was a big fourth and 11. I don't believe he was throwing it to that receiver. The intended receiver fell down. We had kids all around it, and you know they caught the ball, but it was a touchdown. And with the extra point, it made it seven to three. And uh, you know Hugh Springs is is on top now, and we don't handle the kick return. We're going to get poor field position, and things don't look uh, real bright for us at this time. The offense is sputtering, and we can't get decent field position. We throw this ball uh, from Fawcett to Oliver to get us out of the hole a little bit. Uh, come back and try a weak side pass. Uh, not a bad pass, but Terry again, he's just all over the field. And we tried, to, that's the only pass we threw in his area. And he made a good interception. And when he gets people strung out all over the field like that, he really scares you. Uh, there's Mike Kyles again. I don't know how many tackles Mike had, but he had several. And uh, there he is again on he, another big he play. He really on the ball. Going. Really all the ball tonight, Johnny. He really played strong defense. Well, the entire defense played well. There's a receiver that's too open, even though we had people around. But Mike probably played as well as anyone. And uh, as I mentioned, Ed Zed at the other end had a good ball game. We knew we were going to have a lot of pressure on our defensive end because of Terry. Uh, the misdirection plays worked pretty good against Hugh Springs. There's a counter to uh, Tony. He gets good yardage. And there again, Terry's the, the only one that kept him from scoring then. He's the only kid on the field probably could have caught him. But on third down, we weren't able to convert, and we punt the football away again. One of the eight punts by Kenny Davis. Covered there by John Hodges. And, uh, you know, we, we're just asking our defense now to hold on and keep us close so we can make something happen. We're aided here by a holding call and uh, busted play by them there. And uh, I believe that was Mark Hawkins made that tackle. And we're moving on into the fourth quarter now. And we keep telling our offense we're not going to give them any more chances. And uh, this was a, an incomplete pass. Uh, we come out throwing this series. And this is, this is the play of the game here. Uh, sorry, that one's not. We were sacked there and had to punt. It's the next series that we had the big pass completion. But Kenny punts the ball away. There's some uh, nine, ten minutes left in the game. And we tell our defense they've just got to hang on. And, Pass to the big tight end, moves it down into our territory. We've got our backs to the wall, but it seems like that's when our youngsters are their toughest. And uh, not only are we going to hold them, but we're going to put together the big drive to win the ball game. That was a big play with Oliver that uh, got him in the backfield. Yeah, David Oliver uh, spelling for Der uh, David Fawcett there, and receiver had us beat deep fair, but uh, we're not able to, to come up with it. Uh, ball deflected away by Steve Cullen on a good play. Huh? Real good play for Steve. Here we are. This is the big play here I was telling you about. Uh, David Fawcett flushed out of the pocket. He kept his poise. David Oliver changed his pass pattern to go back toward him, made a sliding catch with first down. That was on third and ten, and that kept the drive alive. And I told the youngsters, I said, nothing else fancy. We're going to line up and go at them and knock them off the football and get in the end zone. And I think we run some 10, 12, 13 straight running plays. Uh, Wilshire put his shoulder down, ran hard. The lineman blocked well. We had no penalties, no busted assignments. 
and just really hammered the ball on down the field. And it was very satisfying for us to be able to do this, especially after the long drought we'd had in the ball game with, you know, Hugh Springs just completely shutting us down. I think it showed a lot of patience and class and character. That's uh, Scott Icorn on the counter dive, first down at the eight. Uh, Wilshire for a couple of yards, and they had a face mask penalty, and I told them we didn't want to waste any time, get it in now, and uh, Terry met Tony in the hole, jaw to jaw, and somehow he got through him for the score on first down. Tony Wiltshire with a two-yard run, and of course this is a kick that looked to be good from the film, but the uh, referee says no. Well, we tell the kids, and it's no disrespect to the officials, but when it goes right over the crossbar, it seems like it's good at home, and it's no good on the road, and that's exactly where that one was. And, you know, don't go away, fans, because it's not over. There's like a minute, two minutes to play in the ball game. We make some big plays. Uh, they get a first down here, but we're not real concerned about that because they're out of timeouts. There's like a minute to go. And uh, Terry falls down on this play. We, we hit him about 10 yards down the field, and he's going to catch the ball 35 yards down the field. David Fawcett tripped him up and slowed him down, or else that could have been disaster. And believe me, you know, the hearts are pounding right now, and the blood, blood pressure is soaring, and... You know, if any, any of the people hadn't gotten their money's worth out of the last three or four ball games, if they'll come see us, I'll try to get their money back. Because these things have just been unbelievable down to the last few seconds. And, uh, you know, they're going to they're gonna almost catch the ball there, but the defender knocks the ball away, and uh, they complete one. I'm sorry, this is the one that uh, Steve Cullen intercepts. His knee was down. The official blew the ball dead. We were on the one-yard line and couldn't even relax then because to kill the clock, we had to, you know, we just wanted to fall on it, but we had to move the ball forward or we would have gotten a safety. So there was no time to relax until that one was over. That's a typical barn burner that you've experienced the last three years, Johnny. You've had a lot of games that really have been close, and uh, it, uh, it's a complete team effort. Your coaching staff and young men really have to be proud of this one. We had seven ball games decided last year, either wins or losses, by eight points or less. Uh, the last four weeks, we had, of course, the tie, a two-point victory, a two-point two loss, a two-point victory. I told the kids they're killing me. I don't know how much more we can take, but as long as we keep playing hard and, and winning when we can, I guess we'll just keep on going. But uh, when we're scoring uh, as few points as we are and playing as good a defense as we're playing, I suspect we're going to see this from now on out, and I don't doubt that next week's going to be any different. There in the uh, fourth quarter with about uh, seven or eight minutes left in the game, did you call the team over on the sidelines and kind of tell them, look, let's, let's take that ball down the field and get that touchdown? Actually, it was before Hugh Springs' fourth down play. Uh, I told the offensive kids that were on the sideline, uh, I said, you know, it, it's time to quit fooling around. We're not going to do the things that we don't do well. We're not going to panic and throw the ball every down. We're going to line up and knock people off the football and execute and quit making mistakes and, and, and wake up and get after it. And, you know, I told them they had too much at stake. They'd worked too hard. And, uh, you know, wasn't anything I said or did. It was the kids. And, and they, you know, we lined up and drove the ball some 60 or 70 yards and scored. And it was a very gratifying feeling to be able to do that when the chips were down and we had to. Well, you move now to 1-1-1 one, one, and one in, the, in the conference now. Queen City up for next week here at the Grove and uh, your last home game of the year. And I know that's going to be a game in which uh, the crowd support and all is going to be very favorable. Well, we expect uh, just a huge number of, of our fans to be there. It is the last home game. Uh, the schedule is not real favorable. Our last three are on the road, and uh, we feel like it's going to be a very emotional game. It's the last home game for our seniors. Uh, you know, the Hawks are still right in the middle of this thing. We're in fourth place right now, and uh, Lennon Kildare is 3-0. and The Cavs 2-0-1. and Hooks is 2-1, and and we're 1-1-1. One, and one. And if we take care of our business and win our last four ball games, the way things are falling, there's a real good chance we might get to play that 11th ball game, but uh, we can't look at what anyone else is doing. We can't look down the road. All we can do right now is look to Queen City and uh, take care of that one this week, and then the one next week will be even more important. But uh, this last home game is going to be very important to us. Well, you're basically like uh, your conference is pretty tough, and you've got to take it one game at a time. Right, and we can, uh, it's, it's hard to keep from what if, and you know, we're on the three yard line against Linden, and we want a chance to kick a field goal against the Cab, and we can't what if, we can't look back, we can't play those two games over, and uh, we've got to go ahead and, uh, and look forward, but I think our youngsters are finally beginning to realize how good they are, and, and how good they can be, and I think it's taken us three years to get here, but I think it's finally sinking in that, you know, hey, if we do the things well, that we do well, and and cut down on our mistakes and play hard, we can be as good as anyone. 
We're going to talk further about the next week's ball game with Queen City, but first, uh, this, these messages. Okay, Jonathan, we're sending you back in time. Before television, radio, even before soft drinks. Careful, anything you do could change history. Mom's the word. Activate time travel mode to the year 1885. He's there. Hey, where's my Pepsi? <laughs> it's... Oh, no. He took it. Relax, Smith. What could 12 ounces of Pepsi possibly change? Yeah, what could happen? <laughs> Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. In a world of ordinary mowers, top customers look for the extraordinary, which isn't easy to find, until you come to errands. Errands gives you variable speed control, folding handlebars, more bagging capacity, and more years of service. Errands makes being tough. Crazy. Errands, the easy choice for tough customers. Available at Hunter Power Saw Company, 4810 West 7th, Highway 67, Texarkana. Tony Wilshire and all the folks at Tony Wilshire Company hope you're enjoying these Pleasant Grove Hawks telecasts each week. Thus far in 1986, our Hawks have shown the courage and spirit so necessary to the building of an outstanding football program. Congratulations to Coach Johnny Toons, to all of the Hawks coaching staff, and of course to the Pleasant Grove Hawks on their victories this year. Know too that we're with you all the way regardless of the outcome of each game. Get those tickets. Come out and support the Pleasant Grove Hawks football team in 1986. Queen City comes into the Grove next Friday night for the final home game of the year, your seventh ball game of 1986, and a very important ball game in conference next Friday night. Well, it is. A win uh, next Friday night can keep us in the race. Uh, one of the goals that the seniors had this year was to have a winning season, first ever for Pleasant Grove, and uh, you know we feel confident that we're going to accomplish that. And uh, uh, this is just another one of the many steps that they've got ahead of them, and it's going to be another tough, hard-fought football game. We know that, and uh, you're going to start to prepare hard this week to get ready for it, Gary. One thing about your team, they've, they've <laughs> proved that they can beat anybody on any Friday night if they give 100%. Well, and you know, like we talked about earlier, it, it's, it's taken a while for that to sink in, and I think the last two or three weeks uh, you know, has meant a lot to the youngsters. I think seeing what... Uh, that Lyndon was capable of beating Hooks, and we were certainly capable of beating Lyndon. Has kind of made them realize that we're as good as anyone, and and I really believe our program has grown up. I, I think we're full grown, full fledged now, and uh, hopefully those early early days of struggling are over for us. Well, good luck next Friday night. It's a 7:30 ball game at the Grove, their final game, home game of the 1986 season. So be sure to be out there. Before we leave today, we're going to go back to last Friday night's ball game and take a look at the cheerleaders. Speaking for Johnny Toombs, this is Gary Cherry saying, join us again next week for Pleasant Grove Hawk football. Supply, Davis Shoes, Luther Bells, Jimmy Cobb Insurance, Texarkana Athletic Club, Regency House, McGuire Sound, Photomation, Coca-Cola Bottling Company, Or Chevrolet, Texarkana Immediate Care, Raffaelli Realty, Hunter Power Saw, American National Bank, White's Glenwood House, Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company, Hopkins Economart, Teachers Credit Union, Daily Fence Company, Ramblin' Rose Forest, and Tony Wiltshire Company.
даже 